nous allons pouvoir passer à la communication euh, en, en vidéo de Pavel Lourier. Apparemment, les, les essais techniques ont été faits, donc on devrait éviter. Euh, ça devrait fonctionner. Euh, Delphine Oui. Euh, alors, euh, je, je rappelle, j'aurais dû, j'aurais dû le rappeler, de, le signaler depuis le début, euh, que euh, Djangar Ilyasov travaille à l'Institut des Beaux-Arts de l'Académie des sciences d'Ouzbékistan, euh, dont le directeur est Shapir, Shakir Pidaïev, que nous avons entendu hier. Quant à Pavel Lourier, il est euh, conservateur au département oriental du musée de l'Ermitage, euh, directeur euh, du secteur Asie centrale, et également, ça a aussi son importance, aujourd'hui directeur des fouilles de Penjikent, où il a succédé à Boris Marchak. Yes, okay. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for organizing this uh, wonderful uh, exhibition, which I was not able to see by now, and you know only from the working group and the catalog and the uh, catalog I've seen. And thank you very much for organizing this uh, uh, conference. And uh, so, for a, a set of reasons, unfortunately, I couldn't. Uh, Join you uh, at uh, Collège de France and the Musée de Louvre, and uh, well, it reminds me about an old joke which my grandma and my teacher Vladimir Aronovich Lipschitz liked very much about three uh, brothers, three Jewish brothers who were planning to go to the uh, 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 to industrial exhibition in Paris, and one of them was his name was Leiba, and he said. When I come to Paris, my name will be Louis. And uh, his uh, younger brother, Baruch, said, When I come to Paris, I, they will call me Bui. And uh, the third brother, whose name was Chaim, said, I don't go to Paris. So, greetings from Chaim. And uh, so, in this paper, uh, I would uh, uh, like to speak a little bit some ideas and some maybe case studies about the uh, God's amount pantheon of uh, Soviet. So it is a, far, a very interesting and difficult question uh, which uh, apparently cannot be answered at all. So if we ask it quite broadly and I think in the time not the only uh, specialist or uh, Uh, person interested in uh, Soviet uh, history, culture, and art who asks himself this question: Could can we call uh, Soviet religion Zoroastrianism or the version of Zoroastrianism? Uh, and in fact, I am unable to answer this question uh, because uh, we don't have the definitive criteria to understand what is Zoroastrianism and what is not Zoroastrianism. And and so I'm uh, working now with my friend and uh, and, uh, colleague, uh, Kersa Schroff, on a subject of uh, the Soviet religion for the new uh, new, book on Zoroastrianism, and so he is approaching from his point of view, which is his religious Zoroastrian tradition, inherited from his uh, childhood, and I'm from my point of view trying to define what was so the religion at all, so from the point of view of a scholar and the point of view of a, a more uh, person with more personal religious interest in, into that. So, uh, of course, uh, to what we can say by now is What are the Zoroastrian and non-Zoroastrian elements of Soviet religion? And uh, the main problem is that the, uh, 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 the, the, the sources are extremely uh, different in their nature, and they don't. Uh, some of them are very, very, very laconic, and uh, they do not uh, fit very well to one another. They uh, Uh, are not immediately related to one another. So the question is, first of all, that the written texts are mostly belong not to Soviet religion, but to Buddhism, to, Man- to Manichaeism, to Christianity, uh, that uh, the images we have uh, from 
So they are now, as of norm, they don't have labels, so we don't know who is depicted, what was the name of this diet, and we have to make some congress, some uh, 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 mediated conclusions to uh, uh, reach it. And uh, the problem is that the texts are mostly found in uh, Turfan and Dufan, thousands of kilometers afar, uh, away from uh, part of Sogdiana from Samarkand or Panjik. Nevertheless, comparing some of the written sources to important personal names, uh, so uh, that was my first initial step into this uh, question. Uh, some calendrical issues, archaeological issues, including funeral rituals and iconography, murals, uh, carved wood, terracotta, uh, and uh, so on, uh, can probably bring a more complete picture of uh, that. So, and in the next, in the coming, I think like uh, uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, how much time do we have? Uh, do, uh, I'll try to uh, do. 40 minutes is fine, Pavel. For 40 minutes is fine. Yeah. I'll try to uh, uh, show some of the approaches possible and some of the relations uh, between uh, what is written and uh, what is uh, uh, depicted, the possible relations. And of course, we cannot say very much for sure about that. And so let us start with the authoric personal names. So these are the personal names, names of persons of uh, Soviet people, which were built on the names of God. The slave of the bog god X, the uh, uh, gift of the uh, god Y, the, uh, uh, the mercy of the god uh, of the god uh, Z, and so on. These names, which are attested quite widely, are uh, uh, actually one can suggest that they reflect their real situation in the pantheon. Happily, we have a low, large amount of theophoric uh, personal names in a uh, Soviet language and it lasts for a uh, long period. So we can grasp a few of them from the very early coins, uh, before 4th century AD. We have a number of these theophoric personal names in ancient letters. We know that they were written before 312 by uh, Soviet communities, mostly in Gansu region of uh, China, we have a very great, actually the greatest amount of these uh, personal names of, uh, uh, in uh, the uh, 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 in the inscriptions from Upper Indus Valley, from uh, Shatyal, and so on, where the traders coming to India engraved their names and patronyms on the rocks on the after having crossed the most dangerous uh, mountain uh, passes. Uh, uh, so this is the largest amount of names. We have them in the Mount Mook documents before uh, uh, 722. We have them in uh, colophons uh, and uh, scribbles to various Buddhist and Manichaean manuscripts, it appears that in, in the big uh, Buddhist colophon of P8, which is housed in the Bibliothèque Nationale, uh, uh, the most part of the names do not, does not bear much uh, uh, influence of uh, Buddhist propaganda in uh, Soviet And we have many foreign uh, uh, records, such as Chinese records, Arabic records, of uh, post 8th century uh, uh, Manic uh, Middle Persian Manichaean records and so on. So, with the help of this, we can reconstruct a wide range of uh, gods which were uh, uh, known in Soviet. And moreover, with the span of four, more than four centuries among the main uh, written sources, we can understand what was more popular, what is attested in early sources, what is attested in later sources, what is a common material in the early and late sources. Uh, so uh, using this method, so the, quanti the quantitative uh, 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 
uh, as a quantitative calculation of uh, the names and the division just broadly in the early text, ancient letters and upper Indus Valley, and late text, uh, Mount Moog, uh, Colophons, uh, uh, some epigraphic material, uh, uh, and so on, we can reach the following observations. The most popular guides, the most popular deities, as seen in the collection of so-called personal names, are Nanaya or Nani, the goddess of Mesopotamian origin, who was also known in Bactria, in pre-Christian Armenia, at some moment in Khorasmia, and uh, it, there is one maybe doubtful uh, attestation of her in Parthia. The next popular god was Vakshu. Vakshu is Iranian name, it's a name of Oxus, of the river Oxus. Actually, Sogdiana is not situated at Oxus. The river of Sogdiana is Zarashan and Kastadaria, but nevertheless, Oxus was deified and worshipped there. So, uh, in, for example, in the Roman Empire, uh, Nile or Danube were worshipped not only in, the, in Roman Egypt and Roman uh, Transdunavia, but, uh, Cisdunavia, but also in different parts. So, uh, Oxus was also worshipped. Uh, the uh, uh, many names have just a simple word Vahi, which means God, which was also very popular in this name. So it was some God par excellence. Uh, 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 Nicholas Sims William suggests that he is the, uh, uh, the nickname, the epithet of uh, uh, Mithra. Because the Mount of Mithra is called Vakhkan in Soviet, the, the Mount of God. And another, the fourth popular god is Mars, Moon, which could mean the Moon God or just a moon as an astral symbol or mount. All these meanings suit for Soviet uh, Mars. Uh, so these are the names of gods which form uh, like. Uh, Tens of names. The most popular is Nanaya. So among them, we see uh, the word Bagi and Ma attested in uh, uh, Avesta as a uh, name of God or excellence or as a uh, theonym. Uh, Vakshu is Iranian but not attested in uh, Avesta. Also, there are some early attestations of later Achaemenid period of the names basing on Vakshu. Nanaya is Mesopotamian. Uh, there are, of course, other names which are attested five or up to ten times in the corpus. Uh, uh, and among them, we see other Zoroastrian names. So there are names based on Mithra and on Wokoman. And interestingly, these both Mithra and Wokoman appear in Sogdian uh, texts in two forms. The inherited form and the borrowing from Western Middle Iranian or uh, language like Bactria. So for Mithra, we have Sogdian form Mish, with regular Sogdian development of Thora into Sh, and in many cases, including very early coins, we find him as Mir, which is Mithra turning into West Iranian and Bactrian garb into Mithra, and then into Mir. Uh, so the both uh, names uh, uh, are attested. The same is for Bohumana, which has the term Sogdian uh, variant Khum, Khumna, and uh, the Western Iranian loan, as it was explained by Nicholas Sims Williams from the better, literally better spirit, Vahyahmana, uh, uh, which is Evyaman or Evyamaneu. Uh, so the both coexist in West Iranian and Soviet forms, and I leave uh, the question open whether it was one and the same deity, whether the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the people perceived them as one and the same deity, or different deities, because you cannot find obvious relation between Humna and Evyamani, but still, Etymologically, they are the same. Uh, 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 there are names based on Tishtria, on Druwaspa, goddess Druwaspa. She is female in the personal names as well as in the uh, mural paintings, unlike Lorasp in uh, Bakshren and Lorasp in uh, Chaname. 
uh, Rama, the god of tranquility, Arshtati, that tasted several times, the god of uh, rightness, Hauma, the uh, 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 magical drink, whatever it could be, are attested also fairly well, both in the old and in the late uh, uh, text, but like uh, several times. Other well attested, Iranian, so these gods are known from the Avesta very well, and Omara is one of the uh, Amesha standards. Other well attested Iranian toenames, forming personal names, which haven't been found in surviving Avesta are Tiri, so there is one name somehow based on Tiri in the Avesta, but Tiri is not among the Avesta gods, but he seems to have been spread at least as, uh, as a calendrical deity all over the Iranian world. Tahsich, something like returning one, of uh, the dying and uh, uh, recovering deity according to the idea of uh, Franz Grenet, Boris Marshak, and Xavier Tremblay. Uh, there's some new god, maybe the new moon, Sasan, a theonym known from Pate very well. Uh, Vanipat, the lord of forests, perhaps. Reeve, Khshum, uh, these two names I will speak, see, speak a bit longer in the following and below. And there are many well attested uh, names based on other foreigners. The, there are several names based on Zemat, which is, as we know now, a uh, Soviet pronunciation of Greek Demeter. Breshma, uh, usually considered to be a Soviet version of Vaishravana or Vaishramana, an Indian uh, uh, Buddhist deity, and I suppose quite cautiously that it could be contamination of Vaishravana and Semitic Baal Shamin, who is known as Baal Shamin in uh, pre Christian Armenia. Uh, Adhideva, the supreme god, the Indian word, and even uh, there are a number of names based on Puti or Buti, which means Buddha. So Buddha was also for some, for some reason, a kind of a Southern theory. So at least the names like Glory of Buddha, Slave of Buddha, Maid Servant of Buddha are attested there. Like there is Glory of Nana, Slave of Nana, uh, Maid Servant of Nana, and so on. Like any other god. Yeah? If we use these optics, if we look from the personal names. Uh, there are there are names based on our Mazda, Hormusta, on Anahit, Anahit, on Artavahishta, on Rashnu, on Verdathragna, on Wanan, Vega, uh, on Spenta Aramaiti, Rashnu, Narya Sanka. They are all protested in few instances, and quite few, but are limited to the text of early days, so to the ancient letters and to uh, rock inscriptions, all the uh, uh, upper Indians. And so, basing on our logic, we can notice that these gods were worshipped at some early period in Sofiana, but then fell out of use to some extent, at least in the uh, uh, onomastics. Uh, uh, and surprisingly, they included Ahura Mazda. So, to sum up this uh, chapter of uh, uh, the paper, the presence of Zoroastrian god in Zoroastrian is undeniable, but they were not as popular as the new deities, and foreign goddesses appear even in the early sources. So both Nanaya and Jemat and, uh, uh, are from ancient letters on, uh, from 4th century on. Interestingly, the tonyms picked to translate deities in Buddhist and Manichaean texts are weakly attested within personal names. We will return to that uh, question later, and what I was discussing br uh, briefly about, uh, uh, about very briefly here is a uh, short summary of a paper which is going to appear in uh, a journal in Xi'an in, in this or the 
next year. Uh, now, let us turn to some of these uh, names which are attested in Onomasticon and which are uh, and to which some ideas about iconography can be supposed, uh, can be added. The diet hitch, uh, which is quite common among personal names, is Ryu, which comes from old Iranian Raiwa, rich. He is also appears in the personal names quite often as Vajriu, rich god, god the rich, yeah, and Reu Wax, the rich spirit. In onomastics, it's quite common. The same tonym is recognizable in Western Iranian, starting with uh, uh, LMI renderings of uh, Old Persian, of Achaemenic period, in Bactrian, and in Khorasmian onomastics. Uh, it was proposed to understand Reu as an epithet of Mithra, because Mithra is relevant in, in, uh, in Mithriya. Sun, because uh, uh, I worship the immortal of uh, rich sun, also in the Avesta. Or uh, Mah Moon is also uh, has the epithet of three. Uh, however, we have uh, the uh, 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 we, we, we have in onomastics and in iconography the uh, uh, the, uh, the references to Mithra, even in two shapes. To sun, cloud, the names are uh, uh, there as well, not very common, and to moon are very common. And so one can look to the literary meaning rich of this god. And it will suit to a kind of a deity of richness, a guarantee of a good life. And indeed, a fat reclining uh, god like Kubera or Selenos, with a written bowl. And white skin is well attested in Sogdian and Bakter art. Thoracics, terracottas, wood carvings, and murals, including in one case a worship scene, as we will see in the following. I don't know of any other uh, candidates for this identification, and I propose to equate this uh, fat, bald headed drunkard, uh, like myself, uh, with. Uh, uh, the god Sogdian Ray, which is to some extent, of course, argumentum excellentio, but I think it is uh, logical in itself. So let us look to some of the examples. I understand very well that you are uh, fit with uh, philology by now, and there will be more images in the coming part of, the, uh, of my lecture. So we can recognize him. He is a fat guy. Yeah, He has a Horn in his hand or a bowl with a wine, apparently. Sometimes he has a wine skin, a water skin with wine on the other side of uh, his uh, image. Uh, Both headed fat, and he doesn't look like a uh, person of Soviet form. In fact, number four is not in Punjab, and it is perhaps a uh, Bakhtrian or Gandharan rendering of the same uh, uh, subject. The others are small objects. Terra one is terracotta, so terracotta are usually considered to be uh, small worship objects in the poor uh, families. Yeah, the others are silver objects, but it is a part of maybe a decorative pattern, and not a, uh, an image to be worshipped. Uh, but, but we have him in the uh, wood carvings and in the murals. The uh, images on the uh, left hand of the slide are taken from uh, uh, the very present book of uh, late uh, Boris Marchak and Valentina Raskopova on the uh, dome uh, constructions in uh, uh, Sogdiana. One A is what is survived, and one B is a reconstruction of a wooden. Uh, uh, of a wooden clock which used to decorate, among very many others, uh, the uh, felt dome of the room in a rich so, summer project house 
53 and object 23, uh, 23. So we see also a quite a, uh, a fat uh, guy with bald head, to some extent it's a reconstruction, who is raising his hand as if going to drink uh, wine from the return. The two A and B are uh, also a century murals uh, of uh, the room 18, sector 25. Uh, there, of course, it's largely a reconstruction, but a reclining fat figure in the uh, uh, loincloth, uh, reclining and having a wine skin under his uh, 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 hand and his fat belly are quite well uh, recognizable. And what is important here that it's a picture in the niche. So it's not a niche in the uh, uh, quadrangular uh, uh, reception hall, but a niche at the end of the corridor. And in the niche at the end of the corridor, we also meet the worship deities like Nanaya and so on. Very, 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 very open. And the third one is a painting which uh, uh, has been published in recent years. Uh, uh, several times of so the feasting Soviets, and one of them holds in his hand, the right hand uh, guy, holds in his hand a return. So you see the tracing uh, below, which shows very, very well, so it's not reconstruction at all, a fat guy holding a return in front of his mouth. mouth. So this is a return depicting Silenus or Oreb as I consider him holding a ritual, a very, uh, uh, a, a very um, uh, tricky rendering, uh, I would say. But uh, here it is. Uh, here it is. Uh, so to sum up, I think that there are no contradictions to consider the Reeb as the Soviet name of uh, this god until we find some new material and we are very, uh, always very happy to find some new material and understand that our previous ideas were totally wrong and uh, the next uh, uh, goddess of uh, 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 whose name was Shu and uh, who has a very uh, interesting parallel very far from uh, Central Asia so what I am speaking here about is a, a summary of a paper that appeared uh, two years ago in Russian, but this material was now presented in, uh, in uh, uh, bigger details in, before in English. Uh, so uh, the name of the 12 months of uh, uh, the so-called Zoroastrian calendar, which is the month of uh, Spenta Amaiti, uh, Spandar Mood uh, in uh, uh, Persian uh, has a parallel or different name in Sogdian and Horasmian. In Horasmian it is Khshu il Isbamarji Khshu, Spandar Mat Khu is Khshu, and in Sogdian she is Khshumich and Khshu, which is, uh, seems to indicate that she was, that this Khshu was the uh, Second uh, name of Spencer Armai. Uh, the names of uh, Shumanak are attested in Khorasmia, Sumran, Sumyan, from the first century CE until the eighth uh, century, if my dating of the um, uh, uh, of uh, silver balls is right until the middle eighth uh, century. And uh, in Sogdiana, we also find in seventh and eighth century the names of Shumanak and uh, Kushmanch, uh, the slave of Shum and the one belonging to Shum. There is further a place named Kushminchka in southern Sogdiana, according to uh, Asamani and Yakut, which I understand is Kushminchka, the god of uh, the, the town, I'm sorry, the town cap of Shum, with their relative suffix Einstein. Uh, uh, so that's what we have on Sogdian and Khorasmian grounds, and uh, uh, in Bactrian we have the personal name Shomogbanda, Shomogbanda, slave of goddess Shumuk. Uh, in uh, Bactrian, Khshur regularly uh, turns into Shit. So the first part is uh, identical to this 
true. And according to uh, a recent paper by Nicholas Sims Williams, the name Omar or Oma of the Kushan Pantheon, the spouse of Wesho or Shiva, also comes from Shmai, uh, where Shm turns into double M. So double M is a problem in Bactrian, and it doesn't appear from nothing. And as Nicholas showed, uh, the uh, derivation from Indian Uma with one M into Bactrian Oma with two Ms is a problem. So it needs some different explanation. Uh, a very interesting appearance of what seems to be the same name is in the uh, soft Sanskrit, Buddhist Sanskrit uh, manuscripts of Mahatamaja Sutra of 9th century or maybe later, judging from uh, Turkic names which appeared in it, which was found in Turba, so in the place where most of the Soviet texts have been found. So it is one of the many, many, very many versions of this Mahasamadhi Sutra, which are known in Sanskrit, in Pali, in uh, Tibetan, in Chinese, and uh, so on. Uh, and in this text, this goddess Kshalma appears in the list of deities, and she stands on the place of Soma or Soma in other versions. Uh, so, uh, uh, Weitschmidt, who edited this text, thought that it was a, a, some kind of uh, resanskritization of Soma into Kshalma because uh, O is, uh, because Middle Indian O is sometimes comes from Sanskrit O and Middle Indian S in some dialects, but not in uh, Gandhari, for example, comes from uh, uh, old. Uh, Old India, old India, but I would think rather the opposite that the scribe didn't know about the goddess Soma in a uh, Buddhist pantheon and considered that it was a uh, Shauma who was uh, a part of uh, uh, their neighbors, uh, Soviet uh, pantheon, and he picked that. So that's what we have for Shauma in a uh, uh, pre Islamic uh, Central Asia. But when we go to the uh, southwest, or to the southeast of there, to eastern Hindu Kush, we realize that there is a very similar telling the name of the goddess. The Kafiri people of Kadi, before Islam, so this is the priest of Kadi, in uh, 1896, uh, the Nuristan, the Kafiristan was conquered by Amir Abdul Rahman of Afghanistan, and the Kafirs uh, turned into uh, Muslims. Uh, 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 but some elements survived, and in uh, the early 20, uh, in 1920s, Morgan Siena was able to interview the priest of uh, uh, Kati people, who is on the photo. Uh, according to these things, uh, there, there was a goddess called Shumai. It was related to wild goats, for holy creatures, rains, grape blossom, and she resides on the snowy mountain of Yurichmir, to the north of Nuristan. She is the mother of the wise god Man, and one of the chief goddesses of Kachi, the great fast feast. So they are always eating goats and drinking wine. Uh, the great feast in the mouth of Shude was devoted to Kshuma. And there are variant names of her like Kumrai and uh, Kime. She, here she is the... Uh, and uh, among Dadic people of Kalasha, so they are the speakers of a different uh, language, a different dialect, of, although related. Uh, Kati is one of the Nuristani languages, which are neither, which are Indo-Iranian, but neither Iranian nor Indian. It is a separate small branch of, of uh, uh, Indo-Iranian or Aryan tongues. Uh, the Kalasha are one of the Dadic people, so they are living in a close proximity to Kati, and uh, their language are uh, uh, one of peculiar uh, groups within Indo-Aryan Indo languages, the Dadic language. And uh, the people of Kalasha, who, who live in uh, the uh, northwest frontier province of Pakistan, 
uh, quite few in number, and many of them still continue to worship their pre-Islamic religion. So they are seem to be the only pagans of the present-day Pakistan. And so, so they, among them, Kushumai is the parallel name of the goddess Yaksh, or Indian Yaksha, and this goddess Kushumai was borrowed from Kali, had similar functions. So what we observe, first of all, is that uh, uh, is their phonetic similarity, Kshum on one side and Shumai on the other. Uh, we used to believe that the religions of Kafirs and Kalasha people were something totally inherited from the uh, deepest antiquity and not touched by the neighbors before or after Islam. However, uh, many names, as has been shown by many scholars, um, including Gerard Desmond, uh, for example, have the names which cannot be inherited uh, uh, Nuristani development of uh, Indo-European uh, uh, concepts and were borrowed from India or from Iran. So more uh, the wise god Mahandeo in Kalasha is from Old Indian Mahande. In uh, uh, Kapir should be like Mazandev and some of some of Lamade comes from Brahmade. Imro from Yamaraja, Middle Indian Yamaraya. See, Monster Nahan is a contamination of Persian Nahan and Indian Naga. Uh, the deity Bahisto, Bahish, uh, perhaps uh, comes from uh, Iranian Bagishta, most divine, or Bagayashta, worship keeping gods, or plural Bagishta. Uh, in Sodan, we have one name, Bagishta, the glory of many gods. Namots, Namoch prayer is from Bagdad Namot, so the Namach, which is Namaz, and so on. So they were not isolated, they had borrowings from their uh, neighbors. And that is how I present to explain uh, Shumai. So there you can see the uh, uh, map. The red line is the border of uh, Afghanistan and uh, uh, Pakistan. Uh, and you can see where the languages of uh, Khaki, Kalasha, and others are located. And where is the mountain to reach near, as well as Munji and Yidga uh, regions. Uh, so it is all to the northeast from Kabul. Yeah. So turning back, I suppose that this Kushumai as well is a borrowing from uh, an Iranian language, and namely from a dialect close to the Munji or Yidga. They are familiar languages of Iranian origin, which are close close northern neighbors of uh, Dardic and uh, Nuristani peoples. Uh, so this theorem cannot be inherited into Iran because Kshi realizes Sir or something like that in Nuristani language. In Munji and Yika, however, all the Iranian Kshi is preserved as Kshi or Kshi or Fr. And female names bear the ending A in Munji or Yika. In pre-Islamic Muji, the name of the goddess might be reconstructed as Kshuma, like Kshava from Old Rani uh, We know that Muji and Yidga people, since very long, are, uh, are Muslim, are Ismaili Muslim. But before that, before 11th, 10th, 11th century, maybe the activities of, uh, uh, of Nasir Khosro, or even later, they had some pre-Islamic Iranian banjo, and from there, these names could be borrowed and survive. Nuristani languages do not have primitive consonants, and Iranian kh is realized as k. So even in a very recent uh, borrowing as kati kalos from the word kalos of Arabic origin, and which is very common in Dariq, Persian, in Persian of Afghanistan. Or shabash from shah, bash, biki. And so Yidga lived to the southwest of Turichmir, the residence of Shumai. Yeah, so we can look again at the map. We can look again at the map and see where it is all located. So it's quite close to one another. Munja and Yidga are Easter Island Mirror languages, uh, Kati Prasun 
Ashkur by Gali and with Tana languages have different cover our Indian Dardic language. Now, uh, we are again uh, 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 too much by philology, philology and uh, let us consider if there could be some iconographic identification of this goddess who is, I believe, crossed the borders of uh, Bakra and Sogdiana and survives to some extent even until today. Uh, Nicholas Sims Williams derived her name from Uxma, Uxma, a growing one, fresh. And if so, I immediately suggested that this derivation would hit a hint as crescent made in Soviet art. So we see some of this example of a beautiful maid who is placed in a half halo of a moon crescent looking upward. Uh, uh, and uh, who has appeared several times, including Manichaean uh, miniatures of Turfa. However, when we look at them, we realize that these images are never depictions of kind of real gods. So these are all kind of decorative patterns. They are sometimes very, very numerous, like on the uh, decorated frieze uh, of Kaleka uh, Kakai Charitan. In Panjakian, the depiction is rather big, so it's like that. Uh, natural size depiction of angel. Uh, and it, but it appeared uh, in uh, a row of four or five different other deities which did not survive very well. Uh, so it does not. Uh, uh, show the depiction of real God, maybe some astral beliefs, but not really a derivation of God. So we can notice two points. One of them is uh, that she replaces uh, Spenta Armaiti of the Russian collector. Spenta Armaiti appears only once in early uh, Soviet texts, not uh, without faults. Uh, uh, but, uh, so, and she is the goddess of earth in, uh, in the many concepts coming, starting from uh, uh, Middle Persian and ending in uh, 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 Khotan. So, in this case, she could be the, go the goddess of earth, and in fact, could her name be a regular development from a western Khruma or southern Khrum soil uh, with change of and like in Artash, Artash, fire, another uh, sacral uh, item in Zoroastrianism. Uh, well, in this case, she could replace Pentarmite, but there are no, no uh, uh, very clear uh, images of her except the one on the uh, Bianaiman also. And uh, uh, Shum, uh, uh, is uh, the uh, uh, goddess primarily associated with uh, uh, mountain ramps. I'm a very urban person and I do not know what is the difference and similarity between mountain ram and wild goat, but there is uh, several uh, depictions of the goddess with wild goat in Soviet art. If she already then was the pattern of related to the uh, uh, to this uh, quadruped, she could be the goddess which appears several times associated with uh, uh, with it. So I leave this question by now open. Uh, and now let me return quite briefly to further consideration on Shiva Ekhals in Sogya. Uh, in the well-known passages of Soviet Buddhist Vesanta Rajatak and Dalvala Kiteshwara Stotra, uh, Indian Mahadeva Shiva is equated with Soviet Jordan West Park. The latter has been explained by Henry Kumba as a Western Yuvayus to Uparakaya, Vayu to Arcs in Heaven. Now it is a commonly accepted idea. In the Soviet shamanistic text P3 and the translation of Christian Arcs of Dirge, the term Mahakar appears. In the former, the rainmaker has to draw, among many, many other preparations, to draw his image for in, in the in the river. In the letter, in the Christian acts of judge, uh, uh, judge expels the Saint Judge expels demon, demons from the idol of Mahaka, who is Apollon or Demon Apollon, 
in Surat or Greek versions of the same legend. The Taunim is universally explained as law of Indian Mahakala, one of the retinue emanations of Shiva. Veshpakar is perhaps once met in personal names. Mahakala ne is never there. So this contradicts my first part of the paper. So not all the gods which were known to Sogdians were mirrored in their, uh, uh, in, in their personal names. But uh, uh, more commonly they were. Veshpakar uh, is known very well in Sogdian art. So the uh, uh, image, the yellow, uh, the uh, uh, image with yellow or blue, a very sympathetic background, is from the uh, Panjakan Burger Rogal known. Uh, uh, he has three hands with three eyes each bearing armor, uh, and he also further has a trident, uh, 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 and his hand, as Shiva does, and in one case, uh, blows into a horn. A feature reminiscent of Iranian Vayu, the god of queen. The label Deshparkar can also be understood as the foot of, as, as the fig of this uh, larger image. It is all well, well known. The iconography of Mahakala, who appears two times in Soviet texts, Harnan in Essen, he is depicted as guardian of Varapala of Shiva temples, and he is a trident. In Buddhist Tibetan art, he is one of the fearful deities of blue or black color fat body, seminate, with leopard loin cloth, and also of, often holding a trident in the Ali Hasana of Arthur Pose. This is one of the early depictions from Ladakh temple, from Alchi. Uh, and we see similar iconography in Panjakant, of which I have spoken several times. So the two best depictions are here, blue body, loin cloth, trident, and worshippers around, and the pose of the archer. So these are similar, there are many similarities between depiction of this uh, deity and Mahakala. And I suppose that uh, his name was Mahakala in uh, Soviet art. Two other elements which appear there is these uh, Shiva images of these uh, elements of this image is that he has one female breast, and so it is the, uh, the idea similar to Arthanareshwara, hermaphrodite, in, uh, in uh, the uh, appearance in the uh, uh, depictions of Shiva. So Shiva was also much attached to Parvati, to Uma, that he became, uh, uh, that they turned into one body. Uh, there are other depictions of uh, uh, Shiva in Soviet art, one of the famous sculpture from uh, Panjai camp with Shiva and uh, uh, Uma sitting on Nandibal and its parallels from Khotan and from <coughs> India are also here. It is also well known. And the images of the son of uh, Shiva and Parvati Kirtike or Skandha or Kumara or Murugan, a god of war, a young god of war, Sitting or, or city or uh, 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 depicted with a peacock. So there are so the wood carvings and uh, uh, and um, uh, terracottas and Indian art. So uh, maybe it was he. What was his name in so that I can announce? Or maybe one about the uh, the head of if it means the head of back. And Kirti Mukha, the old devouring creature of Shiva, a kind of a mouth of the head of a lion, without body of a lion, so it cannot feel uh, uh, sad at any moment. It was hungry all the time. And the very similar depictions of him are in India, on the right hand of the slide, and in Soviet, on the left hand uh, of uh, the slide. Because there are similar <coughs> pictures in Hellenistic tradition as well. Uh, I also refrain from uh, saying what was their name for Kirtimukha in Soviet language. And there are a series of demons resembling fearful deities of uh, Shiva cults who are later appear very common in the uh, Buddhist, especially Tibetan Buddhist art. So we see them on, from the famous Rustam, 
painting, we see them on the paintings of uh, uh, Object 24, which has been explained as uh, the deeds of uh, Paramars. And uh, we have the demons, the similar demons with a large pierced eyelobe. Uh, yellow. So the ones on the left hand of the slide are uh, well-known uh, depictions from uh, uh, for, uh, for, for, from uh, Kalaika Kahapeles from Ustrushana, and uh, the one on the right uh, on the top right hand is the depiction of very similar deity with this curly hair and large uh, earlobe and. Uh, a skull on his uh, uh, arm, uh, which uh, it has been found in sector six in Panjakian many many years ago. I never seen the original, but recently we discovered this photo in the photo archive of Panjakian expedition. So it was apparently there and found before the Shahistan uh, murals. So these depictions, this idea of this uh, deity. Have, can be documented to Sogdiana to the first half of the 8th century and not, uh, so the Panjakan painting cannot be later. And we see also again one of the similar images from uh, uh, India. Uh, so, what was the relation of this Buddhist art and uh, Sogdian art? These uh, Buddhist things are usually considered to be uh, 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 to start uh, in the 9th uh, century. But in Sogdian art, we have unambiguous references to them in the 8th century. And maybe the links were uh, somewhat closer. And before concluding, just the, uh, uh, I quote several descriptions of uh, Sogdian religion by Chinese, in their uh, Chinese texts. It's, I'm uh, already finishing. And so, and in this text of time period and later, the art of the Hu people, so the Soviet traders in uh, China, is explained as worship of something similar to Maheshwara, the image of Shiva. So, according to Chinese, the main deity of these people was a kind of Maheshwara. So, maybe sounding of the cause of this Veshwar Kar, Mahakala, and other gods. We, discussed uh, somewhat about. And, of course, we this conference is devoted to the brilliant and uh, uh, exhibition of uh, Uzbekistan at Musée de Louvre, and I always read very positive feedback on uh, web, and I can reach uh, the social media, which are banned in uh, Russia now, and so there are best views of the uh, uh, sculpture of, of Kuva temple there also have very sim great similarities to what we have discussed uh, above and uh, I think that maybe we can take seriously and reconsider again the whole idea of uh, Marcus Mode that it was not a, a Buddhist temple but a kind of a so Indianized Sogdian te uh, temple of Sogdian religion there so at least there are some hints at this explanation. So the goddess Shum survived, as we said, until the present day among Kalasha. And then when I noticed uh, this uh, 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 this billboard in Panjak a few years ago, I understood that Shiva cults are still there in Soviet. Thank you very much for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Pavel. Uh, I think uh, allotted um, uh, more, t a bit more time to Pavel's uh, uh, to Pavel's presentation was justified uh, because of the very rich content uh, of his paper, and uh, also because uh, um, we have to pay tribute to uh, his uh, dedication to this conference. Uh, despite the difficult circumstances uh, which did not allow him to be present uh, in person. Uh, well, uh, 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 the paper is so rich that uh, each point would justify a discussion in itself, and uh, uh, I, I won't inflict 
uh, you the many, many questions I would have to ask uh, to Pavel on some points. I, I, on many points, I agree with his um, uh, explanations and proposals. On others, I don't. Uh, but this uh, will be uh, this will be for other occasions. Um, and uh, Pavel, please, you referred to uh, several recent publications by you, uh, to which I have no access yet. So, if you please could send me. Uh, the PDFs of all of these recent articles in nine, since uh, nine hundred and uh, uh, since uh, two two thousand and nineteen, I have access at the moment only to the Panjikent reports. Uh, if you could send me the papers you have published in various uh, Sborniks, uh, uh, collective volumes, etc., uh, they'll find their way to my classes at the Collège de France, and so get the publicity they deserve. Uh, oui, on avait prévu l'intervention d'Étienne à midi, je crois. Oui, on a, disons, euh, voilà, on n'est pas trop en retard sur l'horaire, donc euh, on a quand même euh, un peu de temps pour quelques questions. Euh, si, euh, oui, alors, c'est pareil, si elles peuvent être adressées euh, en anglais, euh, Pavel répondra immédiatement. Euh, en français, peut-être, il faut que je lui traduise, mais il euh, n'y a pas de problème. 